right? Uh, I think it's already um, six minutes past the time that we uh, the time that we should start. Um, so let's begin. Um, good morning. Right. Today, uh, welcome to the online class uh, for the SP213 um, data models. Today, topics will be on statistical modeling, right? Um, we will now shift our focus from creating visualization to um, analyzing the distribution and analyzing the content of data in order to identify insights that can be used in the um, in business aspects or in the in addressing the the process uh, the questions that you have about that um, so we will start uh, let's start on that let me go to the slide okay um, first of all uh, let me ask you if you if you can hear my um, if you can hear my uh, uh, my voice properly if yes Please respond somehow. Yes, I can hear you. All right, thank you. All right, Ying, uh, if there are questions uh, coming up in the chat, please respond um, to the question for me because I wouldn't be able to do that on, on, the, on the lectures. But, but if, I, I will take a look at that. If you have questions directly, uh, um, um, you want to ask me uh, directly, uh, use the raise hand button. Okay, uh, and then I, and then you can ask that to me, ask that to me directly. Right. Uh, let's start. Uh, today we'll be on. We will talk about uh, modeling statistical distribution. Um, this is also another topic that you will learn in your statistic class when you uh, learn about this. Um, when, the, when you learn about a distribution, you I, I suppose that you may have learned topics like normal distribution, uniform distributions. We will take a look at different types of theoretical distribution so that when you plot your graph, when you create visualization, you can compare those uh, process, you can compare those um, histogram uh, distribution um, to these theoretical distributions. And, and, and also if you have process specification that like you know that you are measuring something that happened um, with the fixed amount of time then there are certain distribution that is already suitable uh, to model such a process. So today we will take a look at different types of distribution and the situations that this dis distribution may arise, right? Today's lecture is actually pretty short. Um, I suppose it takes only an hour, which follows uh, following the university guideline to create online class. They said that you shouldn't have video more than an hour, so, so yeah, here we are, right. Okay, so our objective today is to understand um, different types of statistical distribution. Um, so in, 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 a, in a way, the class name is data modeling, actually. Uh, so we are trying to learn how to uh, behave or how to learn to be modeler to see the process and be able to translate from the process, from the data into descriptions of data or the model, right? Uh, so what we see as the modeler is um, actually in terms, when, when, when we take a look at the process, you, sh you should think about them as a st statistical or probabilistic rather than deterministic because actually nothing in the world is certain except tax. <laughs> That's usually the proverb. Right. Nothing in the world is certain. Uh, uh, so what, when we want to explain or describe the, uh, the data the, or the, the process, we need to think about the variations rather than just the trend itself. So uh, when we're trying to develop the model, uh, we, need to, uh, we need to take a look at the data and then trying to find or trying to compare that distribution of data to the known distributions that you have, right? So that means you need to know distributions beforehand. You need to know that there exists different types of distribution and there are parameters that will affect those distributions. Um, 
then uh, after you can hypothesize the distribution, you have to size the dis distribution up, and you can then estimate the parameters. Model parameters such as mean, standard deviation for normal distribution. For the author distribution, for example, chi-square distribution, um, it might be or, or Poisson distribution, it might be the scale factor. For gamma distribution, there is like shape factor and scale factor. Right. So, so different types of distribution is uh, would be uh, would suit to different um, data uh, in the other way around. Different data would be can be described as uh, different type of distribution depending on the process and the shape of the of the distribution itself. So after you uh, estimate the, the parameters, then you can test the goodness of fit, whether um, the data and the hypothesized distribution fit together. So in terms of statistical modeling, this is about it, that we are trying to select distribution and then trying to fit it to the data that we have and then test if it's good or not. Okay, uh, in the past lectures, like um, I think three lectures ago, when we uh, focus on analyzing univariate distribution, uh, you have already learned how to create a histogram, right? Um, so creating a histogram require you to um, bin the data into branch or bin and then count the number of currents, right? After that, you would have like a distribution of the data set. And by uh, dividing the total number of cases to the count, you got probability, right? Probability distribution uh, is a function that um, kind of explaining the chance that that value would happen, right? the likelihood that you can obtain that value uh, if you randomly sample uh, from the distribution or if you randomly pick uh, one data set, uh, one data point from the distribution. Um, the distribution uh, from the data itself is usually referred to as empirical distribution. Right? The histogram that you create, um, the frequency table that you create is actually one form of the empirical distribution. Um, this is in contrast to the um, theoretical distribution, like normal distribution or a Poisson distribution. Those are theoretical distribution. Um, it is hypothesized to be, uh, it is used to explain the process, right? Um, so it means that you, there, is, there exist um, uh, explicit functions, there exist explicit function to explain uh, those uh, behavior. While for empirical distribution, you got only your data to explain um, the, the, how the data spread. Okay. Right. So this is the probability distribution. And in your statistics class, uh, you will also learn about, and also this class as well, um, the cumulative probability distribution. You have already learned how to create probability distribution, the, um, by creating histogram, but for the cumulative distribution, um, this distribution can be uh, calculated by um, combining the probability distribution over time, or in other words, mathematically, integrating the, um, the, the probability distribution, Px, that you have here, to be Fx, you can integrate it over x, right? And then you got the cumulative distribution. Um, cumulative distribution is a good way that you can map from the probability zero to one to edge value to the variable itself. That means if you can obtain cumulative probability distribution, you can certainly simulate the values of the data that you have. And you can, if we create maybe games or simulations, um, you can make what like if you can random data from zero to one using uniform distribution say i got 0.5 here that it can be mapped to um, the edge of uh, maybe 37 something here right if i random again and i got about maybe um, 0 0.1 then it can be mapped to about 20 uh, maybe 20 26 27 here so cumulative distribution is really useful when you want to create an inverse function from probability and then go back to the actual value, okay? All right, so the relationship between the two can be explained uh, by the integration. Uh, 
in the property distribution, this is an example of the normal distribution. Uh, property distribution uh, is uh, explaining the value, the, the chance probability that you, uh, that you can have at a certain point of value. And cumulative distribution is actually the probability distribution if um, the variable that you, you want is less than the, uh, the point that you are considering, right? So probability of x less than or equal to uh, the, the value that you want, which indicate the area under the curve, right? The area under the curve uh, of the probability distribution. Or well, integration is obtaining the area under the curve. Or in, in discrete sense would be the summation of the each bar, right, of each bar that uh, you have prior to that point. Uh, in continuous world, it's integration, and area under the curve up to this point. Um, so this is the same thing as, as this point, this A and this A. Um, uh, and you can see that uh, CDF, the cumulative, probability, uh, cumulative distribution function, uh, is monotonic. That is, uh, it will be increasing there's no uh, downward because uh, because you kind of move A to the right hand side. Once you move A to the right hand side, it will accumulate the value, and uh, value of F would increase. So so this is the relationship between PDF and CDF. Okay. So far, is it okay? If it's okay, click yes. <laughs> in participant screen. If you don't understand, please click no. Good. Nice, see? Good response, okay. And now let's clear it up, right? Good, let's move on. So, so that's the relationship between uh, PDF and CDF. Um, let me check this a bit. I don't. Um, we we will see in in uh, R later on on how we can use uh, the CDF in order to simulate the data that you want. We will try to uh, simulate the order size um, of the superstore data that we have. I think. Uh, let's check later on. Let me check the slide a bit, and I don't remember. Right, we have this. Okay, we will take a look at how to uh, use the uh, CDF later on. All right. Um, then uh, next, uh, we the well, this lecture contains only three parts per se. This is the first part: understand the relationship between PDF, understand what uh, PDF and CDF are. Uh, the second part would be to oh, to review the different types of property distribution, uh, like we will take a look at normal distribution, Poisson distribution, and how it occurs in nature. Um, and the last part will be on uh, Python, I mean, not Python, R implementation on the usage of PDF and DCDF, and how you can utilize this concept uh, to perform data analytics. Right. So this class and uh, this lecture will particularly focus on, on these topics. And the next one, uh, we will learn about a very cool concept that can be used to um, use in plenty of applications. It's called simulation in the next in the next class, right? Let's move on.